Kara Williams stepped out of the courtroom, her heels clicking confidently against the marble floors. It had been a long and intense case, but she had won, successfully defending her client and cementing her reputation as one of the top lawyers in the city. She had recently been promoted to partner at a prestigious law firm, a position she had worked tirelessly to achieve. Kara had overcome countless obstacles in her career, facing subtle and overt discrimination along the way, but she had never let it stop her. As she exited the courthouse, the sun was beginning to set, casting a golden hue over the city. Kara's mind was already shifting to her next challenge as she made her way to her car, a sleek, black luxury sedan she had purchased as a symbol of her success. It was more than just a car to her. It represented years of hard work, resilience, and overcoming adversity. As she slid into the driver's seat and started the engine, she felt a sense of pride and accomplishment wash over her. But as she drove through the quiet, affluent streets on her way home, Kara had no idea that the events of the evening would soon take a sharp and unexpected turn. While her thoughts were filled with future plans and cases to come, the flashing lights of a police car in her rearview mirror quickly pulled her back into the present. It was a scene all too familiar to her as a black woman in America, and though she had done nothing wrong, her heart sank as she prepared for what was likely to come. Kara wasn't just any lawyer, she was a rising star in her field. Known for her sharp mind, meticulous preparation, and unflinching commitment to justice, she had already built a reputation as a formidable attorney despite her young age. Her colleagues respected her, her clients adored her, and her opponents feared her. But her success hadn't come easily. As a black woman in a predominantly white, male-dominated profession, Kara had faced her fair share of challenges. Yet each hurdle only made her stronger, more determined to succeed. The promotion to partner had been the culmination of years of hard work, late nights, and a relentless drive to prove herself. Kara had always been determined to break through the glass ceiling that others had tried to impose on her. Her resilience was fueled by the knowledge that she wasn't just doing this for herself, but for every woman and person of color who came after her. Her success was a testament to the fact that talent, intelligence, and determination could overcome even the most ingrained biases. As she drove home that evening, Kara reflected on her journey. Her thoughts wandered to the future and the many battles yet to be fought in the courtroom. She didn't yet know that another kind of battle was about to unfold, one not fought with legal arguments, but with dignity and resolve in the face of blatant injustice. Kara had always been prepared for the challenges her profession threw at her, but the challenge she was about to face would test her in a very different way. The streets Kara drove through were quiet and lined with large, impressive homes, the kind of neighborhood where people prided themselves on their wealth and status. It was the type of place Kara had worked hard to reach, a neighborhood she could now comfortably call her own after years of dedication to her craft. The city was winding down for the evening, the warm glow of lights from the elegant homes spilling onto the road as the sun dipped below the horizon. For a moment, Kara felt a sense of peace and contentment. As she cruised through the serene streets, Kara couldn't help but feel a deep sense of accomplishment. She had worked her way from a humble upbringing to this life of comfort and success. Her luxury sedan was not just a vehicle, it was a tangible reminder of everything she had achieved. For Kara, this drive through the affluent neighborhood was a testament to the barriers she had broken, the glass ceiling she had shattered, and the stereotypes she had defied. But as Kara turned onto a new street, the unexpected happened. She saw the unmistakable blue and red flashing lights of a police car in her rearview mirror. The calm of the evening was instantly shattered. Despite knowing she had done nothing wrong, a familiar sense of dread crept over her. This was an experience she had lived through too many times before. Her mind raced as she prepared herself for what would surely be an uncomfortable interaction. Kara sighed, pulling her car over to the side of the road her heart heavy with the weight of what was likely to come. Kara's hands tightened on the steering wheel as the flashing blue and red lights filled her rearview mirror. Her heart pounded in her chest, not because she had done anything wrong, but because of the unsettling reality of what this stop could turn into. She had worked hard to get to this point in life, but the sense of unease that came with interactions like this never truly left her. 
She pulled her sleek black sedan over to the side of the road, trying to keep her composure. As the police car came to a stop behind her, Kara's mind raced through the checklist of what she needed to do. She reminded herself to remain calm and collected, to avoid any sudden movements, and to be as cooperative as possible. She had been through similar stops before, and though they were always nerve-wracking, she had learned how to handle herself in such situations. Despite the frustration she felt bubbling up inside, Kara prepared to face the officer with the dignity and professionalism that defined her. Taking a deep breath, she watched in her side mirror as the officer, an older white man in his forties, with a stern expression, approached her car. His hand rested on his belt, a clear sign of authority, and his posture was rigid. Kara glanced at her purse where her wallet and license were neatly stored and prepared to comply with the officer's request, though a familiar tension settled over her. She had been here before, and she knew exactly what was coming. Officer Rick Patterson, a seasoned cop with nearly two decades on the force, approached Kara's car with the same routine he had followed countless times. To him, it was just another traffic stop. But as he neared the driver's window and caught sight of Kara, a black woman in an expensive car, his demeanor subtly shifted. He didn't immediately acknowledge her as a lawyer or a professional. Instead, his gaze lingered on her luxury sedan, his mind already forming assumptions. Kara lowered her window and smiled politely, doing her best to appear cooperative despite the tension building within her. Good evening, officer. How can I help you? She asked, her tone calm but firm. Officer Patterson's response was curt. License and registration, he said without returning the greeting, his eyes still scanning her car. There was something in his tone that told Kara this wasn't going to be a simple interaction. As she reached for her documents, Kara felt the familiar sting of frustration. She knew this situation all too well, the way she was being sized up, the doubt in the officer's eyes, the underlying assumption that she didn't belong here. But she also knew better than to let her emotions get the best of her. Instead, she handed over her license and registration, keeping her composure as Officer Patterson took them with a look of skepticism. This was only the beginning, and Kara could sense that the officer's prejudice. Officer Patterson studied the documents in his hand, but instead of simply verifying Kara's information, he glanced back at her, a frown deepening on his face. Is this your car? He asked, his tone dripping with suspicion. The question hung in the air, loaded with implication. Kara's pulse quickened, but she remained composed, knowing exactly what he was insinuating. She had dealt with this type of questioning before. The assumption that a black woman in a luxury vehicle must somehow be out of place. Kara met his gaze, her expression unflinching. Yes, officer, it's my car, she replied firmly. She could feel the weight of the accusation behind his words. He wasn't just asking a question. He was questioning her right to own something of value something that he clearly didn't associate with someone like her. The realization that this was no routine traffic stop settled over Kara like a heavy cloud. This was about something deeper, prejudice masked as procedure. Officer Patterson's eyes flicked back to the car, as if he were searching for something to confirm his suspicions. He couldn't seem to reconcile the image of Kara, well-dressed, confident, and driving a high-end vehicle, with his preconceived notions. Mind stepping out of the vehicle? He asked, his hand now resting on his holster. The question was less of a request and more of a command. Kara's patience was wearing thin, but she knew she had to play this carefully. She had nothing to prove, but this officer was clearly determined to treat her as if she did. Kara took a deep breath, her mind racing through the possible outcomes of the situation. Despite the growing frustration gnawing at her, she maintained her composure. Years of training in the courtroom had taught her how to stay calm under pressure, and this was no different. She wasn't just a woman being stopped on the side of the road. She was a lawyer, someone who knew her rights and how to protect them. Still, the blatant assumption that she couldn't possibly own the car she was driving stung deeply. Of course, officer, Kara said calmly, stepping out of the vehicle as requested. She moved with the grace and confidence that came naturally to her, refusing to allow this situation to strip her of her dignity. As she stood beside the car, she could feel the eyes of the officer on her, still searching for something, anything, that could justify his suspicions. 
but Kara wasn't about to give him the satisfaction of seeing her rattled. Inside, Kara felt the growing anger and disbelief, but she knew better than to show it. This wasn't the time or place to let emotions take control. She had dealt with subtle discrimination throughout her career, but this moment felt particularly degrading. She knew that Officer Patterson was operating under the guise of law enforcement, but his actions were fueled by bias. Kara stood her ground, determined to maintain her professionalism and composure, no matter how deeply this incident cut. As Officer Patterson circled around the luxury car, his doubts only seemed to grow. Despite the valid registration and the professional demeanor of the woman in front of him, he couldn't shake the notion that something was off. The reality of the situation clashed with the deeply ingrained biases that had guided so many of his previous stops. He had made up his mind the moment he saw Kara. Her presence, her car, her confidence didn't fit the narrative he had in his head. For Patterson, this was no longer about verifying paperwork. It was about confirming his suspicions. Every action Kara took, her calm response, her willingness to comply, only seemed to frustrate him further. He couldn't find the flaw he was looking for, the mistake that would validate his behavior. Instead, he was faced with a woman who was every bit as legitimate as the paperwork she had handed him. But in his mind, that wasn't enough. Kara, meanwhile, could feel the officer's doubt growing stronger with every passing second. She could see the struggle on his face, the way he was trying to reconcile his assumptions with the reality in front of him. But she also knew that this wasn't her battle to fight. Officer Patterson's bias was his burden, not hers. All she could do was remain composed and let him dig his own hole, knowing that she had done everything right. The irony of the situation wasn't lost on Kara. He was questioning her legitimacy, while she had spent her career defending the rights of people just like him. Officer Patterson held the license and registration in his hand, his expression skeptical despite the clear legitimacy of the documents. Kara stood silently, watching as he glanced between her and the paperwork, clearly unsatisfied with what he saw. His gaze shifted back to the car, as if searching for something, anything, that would confirm his doubts. The tension was thick, but Kara refused to let him rattle her. She had faced this kind of treatment before and knew better than to let it break her composure. Patterson handed the documents back to her with a sharp, dismissive motion but his expression hadn't softened. This car doesn't seem like it belongs to someone like you, he said, his words heavy with insinuation. Kara felt a surge of anger rise in her chest at the blatant insult, but she swallowed it down, knowing that a confrontation would only escalate the situation. She took her license and registration with a steady hand, her face calm but her eyes burning with quiet defiance. For Kara, the interaction had gone from uncomfortable too infuriating. She knew that no matter how compliant she was, Officer Patterson wasn't going to let this go without making it clear that, in his mind, she didn't belong in this neighborhood or in this car. But Kara wasn't going to give him the satisfaction of seeing her lose her temper. Instead, she held her head high, waiting for what she knew would come next, the officer's attempt to escalate the situation further. Step out of the vehicle, Officer Patterson repeated his voice more forceful this time. It was no longer a polite request, it was a demand. Kara, standing outside the car, had complied already, but Patterson's intent was clear. He was treating this situation as if she were a suspect, not the owner of the very car she had worked so hard to purchase. Kara's stomach tightened at the realization that this was no longer just an ordinary traffic stop. It was becoming a test of power. Kara stepped back slightly, giving the officer space as he moved around the car, his eyes still full of doubt. I need to check the vehicle, Patterson added, already moving toward the driver's side. Kara's frustration simmered beneath the surface, but she remained calm, allowing him to continue. She knew that she had nothing to hide, and that every step Officer Patterson took only further exposed his bias. The fact that he was escalating the situation, despite having no legitimate reason to do so, was all the evidence she needed of what this was really about. As the officer began to search the car, Kara stood quietly by, her heart heavy. The luxury sedan, which had once been a symbol of her success and hard work, was now being treated as a stolen object, 
as though her achievements couldn't possibly be legitimate. It was a bitter pill to swallow, but Kara knew she had to stay strong. This was about more than just her. It was about every person who had ever been treated this way simply because of the color of their skin. She wasn't going to let this officer break her, no matter how degrading his actions became. As Officer Patterson searched through her car, Kara stood on the side of the road, feeling the weight of humiliation settle over her like a suffocating blanket. Every movement the officer made felt like a personal attack, a reminder that no matter how successful she was, no matter how far she had come, there would always be people who looked at her and saw only her skin color. The luxury car she had worked so hard to afford was now a source of suspicion, its very existence challenged by a man who couldn't fathom that she belonged behind the wheel. The worst part was the growing audience. A few neighbors had begun to gather nearby, watching the scene unfold from a distance. Some were curious, others concerned, but none of them intervened. Kara could feel their eyes on her, judging her silently. It was as though her entire life, her accomplishments, and her dignity were being stripped away in front of these strangers, reduced to a stereotype because of the officer's prejudice. Kara's mind raced, but her face remained calm, her posture strong. She refused to let the shame or anger overwhelm her. She had spent years building her career, earning the respect of her peers and clients. This moment, humiliating as it was, would not define her. But as the officer continued his unnecessary search, Kara couldn't help but feel the sting of injustice. She had done everything right, and yet, here she was, on the side of the road, being treated like a criminal for simply existing in a space that someone like Officer Patterson believed wasn't hers to occupy. As the search dragged on, the number of onlookers began to grow. Curious residents, drawn by the flashing lights and the presence of a police car, stepped out of their homes to watch the unfolding drama. Some stood on their porches, arms crossed, murmuring to each other. Others ventured closer, peering from the safety of their driveways. The tension in the air was palpable, a mix of unease, suspicion, and fascination. Kara could feel the weight of their gazes, the scrutiny of strangers adding to her already mounting frustration. Kara glanced at the growing crowd, her jaw tightening as she maintained her composure. She knew that in moments like these, perception was everything. The people watching didn't know her story, her accomplishments, or her integrity. All they saw was a black woman being questioned by a white police officer. And for many of them, that image alone was enough to draw conclusions. It was a sickening feeling to be judged not for who she was, but for how she looked in this moment of power imbalance. Officer Patterson seemed oblivious to the tension building around him, or perhaps he was feeding off it. He continued his search with an air of authority, as if he were doing a public service by treating Kara as a suspect. The entire situation had become a spectacle, a theater of prejudice playing out on a quiet suburban street. But Kara stood tall, refusing to let the presence of the onlookers shake her resolve. She knew she had nothing to prove, but the injustice of the situation was impossible to ignore. Despite the overwhelming sense of injustice and the growing crowd of onlookers, Kara's composure never wavered. Years of working in a high-pressure legal environment had taught her how to remain calm under duress, how to keep her emotions in check even when the situation felt unbearable. She had spent her entire life facing subtle and overt racism, and while each experience hurt, she had learned how to survive them with dignity intact. This moment was no different. Kara stood by her car, her arms loosely crossed in front of her, watching Officer Patterson with a steady gaze. Her heart pounded, and the knot in her stomach tightened with every passing second, but outwardly she projected nothing but calm. She wasn't about to give Patterson the satisfaction of seeing her rattled. This was a game of power, and while the officer might hold physical authority in this situation, Kara knew her true power lay in her restraint and intellect. As Patterson continued his futile search, Kara reminded herself that she had faced far more daunting challenges in her life and career. This was humiliating, yes, but it wasn't going to define her. She had fought her way to the top of her field, overcoming obstacles far greater than this, and she wasn't about to let one prejudiced officer derail her sense of self-worth. Her composure wasn't just for herself, 
It was a statement to everyone watching that she would not be broken, no matter how hard the world tried. Kara wasn't just a black woman being wrongfully accused. She was a lawyer, one who knew her rights better than most. As Officer Patterson continued to treat her like a suspect, Kara's legal training kicked in. She knew exactly where the line was between what the officer was allowed to do and what he was overstepping. Patterson had no probable cause to search her car, and Kara knew it. But for now, she let him proceed, understanding that confronting him too soon might escalate the situation even further. Inside, Kara felt a sense of resolve. She was fully aware of the power dynamics at play, but she also knew that knowledge was power. If Officer Patterson crossed a legal boundary, Kara would be ready. Her mind raced through the possibilities, false accusations, unlawful searches, and civil rights violations. She had spent years defending people in similar situations, but now she was living it herself. It was a surreal moment, being on the other side of the law, but Kara's mind remained sharp. She kept her composure, knowing that timing was everything. If this officer thought he could intimidate her, he was sorely mistaken. Kara had fought battles in the courtroom far tougher than this, and she was prepared to take this case as far as it needed to go if her rights were violated. She stood there, her calm demeanor betraying none of the calculations happening in her head. At the end of the day, Kara knew one thing for certain. She wasn't going to let this go unchallenged. Despite Kara's calm compliance and the legitimacy of her documents, Officer Patterson wasn't ready to back down. His pride and bias clouded his judgment. And rather than admitting he had no reason to continue, he doubled down. Patterson's face hardened as he circled back to her. Are you sure this is your car? He repeated, this time with even more skepticism in his voice. It was clear that nothing Kara said or did would change his perception of her. Kara's patience was wearing thin. She had already answered his question, had already proven her ownership of the car. But now, it wasn't about the car. It was about the officer's unwillingness to let go of his assumptions. Kara kept her composure, though inside she was fuming. Yes, officer, I'm quite sure, she replied, her voice calm but firm. She wasn't about to let him push her any further without consequences. Patterson's frustration was evident. He couldn't understand how Kara remained so poised, so in control, despite everything he had thrown at her. In his mind, this wasn't how these stops were supposed to go. The suspect was supposed to crack, to reveal their guilt. But there was no guilt here, and the more Patterson pushed, the more he realized he was losing control of the situation. His next move would be critical, and Kara knew it. She could feel the tide turning, even if Patterson couldn't. Kara had reached her limit. Officer Patterson's behavior was becoming increasingly aggressive, and she knew it was time to take control of the situation. Without making a scene, she calmly reached for her phone and stepped a few paces away from the officer, dialing a number she knew would turn the tide in her favor. As the phone rang, she kept her expression neutral, refusing to give Patterson any indication of what she was doing. The phone connected to her law firm, and within moments, she was speaking to her colleague, a senior partner who specialized in civil rights cases. I need some backup, she said quietly, her voice steady but urgent. She explained the situation quickly and concisely, outlining the officer's behavior and the illegal search of her car. Her colleague assured her that action would be taken immediately and that she should remain calm until help arrived. Kara ended the call and turned back toward Officer Patterson, who had taken notice of her brief conversation but didn't seem concerned. He continued his search, oblivious to the fact that Kara had just set a series of events in motion that would bring his actions under intense scrutiny. For now, she remained silent, but she knew that her firm was already mobilizing to protect her rights and hold the officer accountable. This was no longer just a traffic stop. It was a legal battle in the making. It wasn't long before a second police car pulled up to the scene, but this time, the man who stepped out was not just another officer, he was the police chief. Chief Anderson was a tall, authoritative black man in his late fifties, with years of experience on the force. He had received a call from Kara's law firm, informing him of the situation, and he had personally come to address it. His presence alone shifted the atmosphere as the onlookers began to murmur, and Patterson's posture stiffened. Officer Patterson, initially confused by the chief's arrival, 
stood up from his search, wiping his hands on his uniform. Chief Anderson, I didn't expect you here, Patterson said, his tone cautious. Kara watched as the chief approached, his face unreadable, but his gaze sharp. Anderson didn't respond to Patterson immediately. Instead, he walked over to Kara, offering her a respectful nod before turning to his subordinate. Officer Patterson, I need to speak with you, the chief said firmly, his voice leaving no room for argument. Kara stayed silent, but she could see the shift in Patterson's demeanor. The chief's arrival had rattled him, and for good reason. Chief Anderson had a reputation for fairness and holding his officers to the highest standards. Kara knew that Patterson's actions were about to be put under a microscope, and the realization was just beginning to dawn on the officer himself. As Chief Anderson pulled Officer Patterson aside, Kara could see the moment of realization dawn on the officer's face. Patterson had no idea who Kara was, but now it was becoming painfully clear that she wasn't just another driver he could push around. The chief's serious tone, combined with the gravity of his presence, made it obvious that this situation was far more significant than Patterson had initially believed. Chief Anderson didn't mince words. Do you understand who this woman is? He asked Patterson, his voice low but firm. The officer blinked in confusion, still trying to process what was happening. She's one of the top lawyers in this city, a partner at one of the most respected firms. She's also filing a complaint as we speak. Do you realize what you've done here? The weight of the chief's words hung in the air like a heavy cloud. Patterson's face drained of color as the full extent of his actions hit him. His attempt to intimidate Kara, to question her right to own the car, had now spiraled into a potentially career-damaging event. Kara stood a few feet away, watching the exchange with a quiet sense of satisfaction. She didn't need to raise her voice or make a scene. The law, her knowledge, and her connections had spoken for her. Patterson, once so sure of his authority, now looked like a man who knew his world was crumbling beneath him. Officer Patterson felt the ground shift beneath him as the gravity of his mistake settled in. He had been so certain in his assumptions, so sure that Kara Williams didn't belong in that car or in that neighborhood. Now, with Chief Anderson glaring at him and the crowd of onlookers growing more interested by the minute, Patterson realized just how badly he had misjudged the situation. His confidence was shattered, replaced by a growing sense of dread. The chief wasn't done. You've conducted an unlawful search, Anderson continued, his voice sharp and unforgiving. You've harassed this woman without probable cause. This isn't just a mistake, Patterson. It's a violation of her civil rights. The words hit Patterson like a punch to the gut. He had been an officer for years, but never had he been on the receiving end of such direct, professional criticism. His chest tightened as he tried to find something to say, but no words came. Kara watched the scene unfold, feeling a mixture of vindication and frustration. She had been subjected to this treatment simply because of the color of her skin and the assumptions that came with it. While Patterson's world might be crumbling now, she knew that for far too many people, this type of discrimination happened without consequence. But today, at least, there would be accountability. Patterson's arrogance and prejudice had led him to this moment, and now he would face the consequences. Officer Patterson stood stiffly as Chief Anderson laid out the severity of his actions. The reality of his mistake hit him harder with every word the chief spoke. His initial doubts about Kara, his refusal to believe that she could own such a car, and his determination to prove her guilt had all led to this moment. He had misjudged not only her, but the situation as a whole, and now his career was on the line. Patterson had always prided himself on being a firm but fair officer, but today he had crossed a line. For Kara, this was a familiar narrative, one where people in positions of authority made snap judgments based on race, only to realize too late that they were wrong. But this time, she wasn't just another victim of racial profiling. She was a lawyer with the knowledge, resources, and connections to fight back. The satisfaction of seeing Patterson squirm under the weight of his mistake was undeniable. But it also underscored a deeper truth. People like him rarely face consequences without someone like her fighting back. As Patterson struggled to come to terms with what he had done, Chief Anderson continued to drive the point home. 
This kind of behavior won't be tolerated, Anderson said sternly. There will be an investigation into your conduct, and you'll have to answer for this. The crowd of onlookers, who had once been silent, now buzzed with quiet whispers. The power dynamics had shifted entirely, and Officer Patterson, once so sure of his authority, was now just another man facing the consequences of his prejudice. While Officer Patterson's world crumbled around him, Kara stood tall, her presence unshaken by the unfolding chaos. She had been through this before, facing unjust accusations, being treated as though she didn't belong, but this time she had the upper hand. Watching Patterson squirm under the weight of Chief Anderson's words was a vindication of her calm composure and refusal to back down. She had let her professionalism and intellect speak for her, and now the system was working in her favor. The gathered crowd, once watching with curiosity, now seemed to recognize the significance of what was happening. Some whispered quietly, others exchanged knowing glances, but Kara remained focused. This wasn't just about Patterson's mistake. It was about a system that allowed people like him to operate unchecked for too long. She knew that while she could walk away from this incident with her dignity intact, others might not have been so lucky. That thought weighed heavily on her as she stood there, watching the officer face the consequences of his actions. Kara's resolve only strengthened as she listened to Chief Anderson's reprimand. She knew this moment wasn't just about seeking justice for herself. It was about standing up for those who couldn't. Her mind was already turning to what she would do next, how she could use this experience to advocate for broader change within the legal system and law enforcement. For now, though, she remained calm, her presence a quiet but powerful force in the midst of the chaos around her. The power dynamics had shifted completely, and Kara now stood in control of the situation. What had begun as an officer's attempt to undermine and humiliate her had turned into a display of her own resilience and strength. Patterson's prejudice had backfired spectacularly, and now Kara, a lawyer who knew every inch of the law, held all the cards. She didn't need to raise her voice or assert her dominance. Her knowledge and professionalism had spoken for her. As Chief Anderson continued to berate Patterson, Kara remained composed, silently observing the fallout. The officer who had once tried to assert his authority over her was now on the defensive, struggling to justify his actions. The shift in power was undeniable, and Kara felt a sense of vindication as she stood there, knowing that she had handled the situation with grace and dignity. The law was on her side, and the officer who had tried to strip her of her rights was now at its mercy. Kara wasn't just in control of the moment, she was in control of the narrative. She had taken what could have been a degrading experience and turned it into a lesson, not just for Patterson, but for everyone watching. This wasn't just about one traffic stop. It was about confronting the systemic biases that allowed situations like this to happen in the first place. Kara knew she had won the battle, but the war for justice was far from over. Even though Kara had every right to be outraged, she maintained her professionalism throughout the ordeal. This was not her first experience with systemic injustice, and she knew that keeping her composure was her greatest weapon. There were times when she felt the anger rise, especially as Officer Patterson continued to question her with baseless accusations, but she reminded herself of the bigger picture. She wasn't just representing herself, she was standing up for everyone who had ever been in her position. Kara's calm, measured demeanor only served to highlight the contrast between her and Officer Patterson's aggressive approach. While Patterson had tried to wield his authority as a weapon, Kara had relied on her intelligence, legal knowledge, and poise to disarm him. The more he pressed, the more unshakable she became. This was the essence of her professionalism, a refusal to be pulled into the chaos of the moment, despite the blatant injustice unfolding before her. As the situation continued to unravel, Kara's reputation as a respected lawyer remained intact. She knew that every eye was on her, from the bystanders to her peers at the firm, and she was determined to rise above the ugliness of the encounter. Though she had been wronged, she refused to let this moment define her as a victim. Instead, Kara turned the incident into a powerful example of how professionalism could overcome even the most blatant displays of prejudice and abuse of power. The residents who had gathered to watch the scene unfold 
were now caught in a mixture of shock and awe. At first, they had watched with detached curiosity, unsure of what was happening. Some of them had even assumed, like Officer Patterson, that Kara must have been guilty of something simply because of the way the scene played out. But as the situation progressed, it became clear that Kara wasn't a suspect. She was a victim of racial profiling, and she had turned the tables on the officer with incredible poise and grace. Whispers spread through the small crowd as Chief Anderson reprimanded Officer Patterson. Many of the residents had never seen such a blatant display of bias from a police officer in their quiet, affluent neighborhood. For some, this was a moment of awakening, a realization that the prejudices they had thought were distant problems were alive and well, right on their own streets. Others looked at Kara with newfound respect, admiring how she had handled the situation with dignity, even as she was being wrongfully accused. Kara could feel the shift in the atmosphere. The same people who had once stared at her with suspicion were now seeing her for who she really was, a strong, capable woman who had refused to let injustice break her. The power of that moment wasn't lost on her. In a way, this experience had become more than just her own personal battle. It was a public demonstration of what happens when people in power are held accountable and how important it is to stand up to bias no matter where it occurs. Chief Anderson was known for being fair but firm, and today Officer Patterson was experiencing the full extent of his boss's discipline. The chief's words were sharp and decisive, leaving no room for misinterpretation. What you did here today is unacceptable, Anderson said, his voice steady but filled with authority. You allowed your prejudice to cloud your judgment, and now you will face the consequences. Kara listened closely as the chief continued, knowing that this was a moment of reckoning for the officer. Patterson stood there, unable to meet the chief's eyes, as the reprimand continued. His face had gone pale, and his posture, once so confident and authoritative, was now deflated. He had never expected his actions to result in such a public humiliation and the weight of Chief Anderson's words made it clear that this was only the beginning of his troubles. There will be an internal investigation, Anderson continued, and you will be held accountable for your conduct today. Kara watched the scene unfold with a quiet sense of vindication. She had done everything right, remained calm, followed the law, and allowed the truth to come to light. Now, the man who had wronged her would face the consequences of his actions. While the road to justice was still long, this was a significant step in the right direction. The system, though flawed, had shown that it could work when people like Chief Anderson were willing to stand up for what was right. As Officer Patterson stood humiliated and the crowd dispersed, Kara's legal mind was already planning her next move. This incident wasn't over, and she knew she had the opportunity to make it a turning point, not just for herself, but for others who had faced similar injustices. She had been wrongfully targeted, and despite the satisfying outcome today, there were still systemic issues that needed to be addressed. Kara had spent her career fighting for justice in the courtroom, but now she was about to take on a fight that was far more personal. Her law firm would undoubtedly support her if she chose to take legal action against the police department, and she was already thinking about how she could use this case to push for broader reforms. Racial profiling was a persistent issue, and this incident had highlighted just how deeply ingrained those biases were, even in affluent neighborhoods where people thought they were immune to such problems. Kara knew that her voice carried weight, and she wasn't going to let this opportunity slip away. As she stood by her car, Kara made a mental checklist of what needed to happen next. She would file an official complaint, pursue legal action if necessary, and work with civil rights organizations to ensure that this case didn't go unnoticed. This wasn't just about her. This was about fighting for the people who didn't have the same resources or platform to demand accountability. The wheels of justice were already turning, and Kara was at the helm, ready to see it through. The humiliation Kara had felt during the stop had been intense, but instead of letting it diminish her, she turned it into fuel for her fight. In the moments when Officer Patterson had treated her as though she didn't belong, as though her success was somehow undeserved, Kara had felt the sting of discrimination that too many others had experienced. But now, standing victorious, she resolved to channel that pain into action. 
This wasn't just about one incident. This was about challenging the systemic racism that allowed such incidents to happen over and over again. Kara knew that being humiliated in public had been meant to make her feel small, to strip her of her power and dignity, but instead, it had strengthened her resolve. She wasn't just a victim of racial profiling. She was a lawyer with the power to affect real change, and she intended to do just that. The humiliation had only ignited a fire within her, a fire that would drive her forward in her quest for justice. As she prepared to leave the scene, Kara reflected on how far she had come in her life and career. She had faced challenges before, but this was different. This was a reminder of how far society still had to go and how much work was still needed to ensure that others didn't face the same kind of unjust treatment. Kara's fight wasn't over, not by a long shot. This was just the beginning of something much bigger, and she was ready to take it on. Kara had always been aware of the systemic biases that existed in society, but this experience had brought those issues into even sharper focus. As she drove away from the scene, she couldn't help but think about the countless others who had faced similar situations. Those who hadn't had the resources, knowledge, or support to fight back. Racial profiling, unchecked authority, and implicit bias were deeply embedded in the structures of law enforcement, and Kara was determined to confront those issues head on. She knew that fighting systemic bias wasn't something that could be achieved overnight. It would take time, persistence, and the combined efforts of many people. But Kara was ready for that challenge. She had spent her career fighting for justice in the legal system, and now she had a new mission, to dismantle the biases that had allowed Officer Patterson to treat her the way he had. This wasn't just about one officer. It was about an entire system that needed reform. As Kara formulated her plan, she thought about the tools at her disposal, her legal expertise, her connections, and her platform as a high-profile lawyer would all play a role in her fight. She wasn't just going to file a complaint and walk away. She was going to use this experience as fuel to push for change, not just in her city, but across the country. The fight against systemic bias was long and difficult, but Kara was more than ready to lead the charge. Meanwhile, Officer Patterson was left to confront the prejudices that had led him to this point. As he watched Kara drive away, he couldn't ignore the sinking feeling in his chest. He had always prided himself on being a fair and just officer, but today he had been forced to confront the reality of his own biases. His assumptions about Kara, the doubts he had about her car, her success, her presence in that neighborhood, had all been rooted in stereotypes he hadn't even realized he held. Patterson knew there would be consequences for his actions, both personally and professionally. The internal investigation would likely lead to disciplinary measures, and the complaint Kara had filed would put his career under scrutiny. But more than that, Patterson had to come to terms with the fact that his behavior had been influenced by a deeper, more insidious prejudice. It was a difficult realization, one that left him feeling ashamed. For the first time, Patterson was forced to look inward, to question the assumptions he had made about people like Kara. The experience had shaken him, and while he couldn't undo what had happened, he could at least begin to address the prejudices that had led him down this path. It was a humbling moment for Patterson, one that would change the way he approached his job and his life moving forward. Kara's victory wasn't just personal. It was a symbol of strength and justice in the face of systemic bias. She had faced racial profiling head-on and had come out on top, not because of luck, but because of her intelligence, resilience, and unwavering belief in her own worth. Her ability to remain calm, to assert her rights, and to take action in the aftermath had turned what could have been a humiliating experience into a powerful demonstration of justice. As she reflected on the day's events, Kara knew that this was more than just a win for her. It was a win for everyone who had ever been wrongfully targeted, for everyone who had been made to feel like they didn't belong because of the color of their skin. Kara's fight wasn't over but today had been a victory, a victory that proved that strength, dignity, and justice could prevail, even in the face of systemic prejudice. Driving home, Kara felt a sense of pride and empowerment. 
She had turned a moment of injustice into an opportunity for change, and she knew that her actions would have ripple effects beyond this one incident. The road ahead would be long, but Kara was ready to walk it, knowing that she had the power to make a real difference in the fight for justice and equality. Today was just the beginning, and Kara was determined to see it through to the end.